So for this project, I'm using a rock where I've already done the background, and I did that in tutorial number 156, which I will link below down in the description. So I'm also using tracing paper, Sorel transfer paper, black acrylic paint, or you could use an acrylic fine tip marker if you have those available. And then I'm also going to be using a, a small nail dotting tool, which I'll explain why later on in the video. So all of the supplies will be linked below to Amazon uh, down in the description. So let's get started. So first off, I needed to find my image that I wanted. And I wanted a zebra because I just wanted to do black over my background. So I went to pixabay.com and searched for zebras and then searched through all of their images looking for one that I thought would work for my for my particular background. And Pixabay is free for artists to use uh, without having to give credit or money to uh, the photographer. So here I have found my image and I downloaded it onto my iPad, you could download it onto your computer, and then I'm kind of just checking with my rock to see this is just a the same style, and I use rocks from the mold, or I made the rocks using the mold from the Happy Dotting Company, I will also link that down below in the description, and I'm just trying to figure out if it will fit on this particular rock. This is the same mold that I used for the one with the alcohol inks. <clears throat> So I'm just getting, and I'm using, I will link the the uh, apps that I used. They will be listed down below as well. But I use Lightbox Trace on my iPad, and I import the image. I did flip it so that it would fit on my rock the way I wanted it to. And then when you use this Lightbox Trace app, you can lock the image so that when you touch your screen, the image doesn't bounce around. And then <clears throat> I'm going to start tracing the image out. I tape the, the uh, tracing paper onto my iPad and then just with a pencil start tracing. Now I got concerned about the size of my image. So I went and I actually traced the rock onto my uh, tracing paper so that I could see exactly how the image was going to fit. And then I, now I know what size I want the image to be. And once I have that figured out, then I will lock the image to that size and trace it. And you definitely want to tape your tracing paper down to your um, iPad or whatever you're using to, to trace so that it doesn't move around. And then I'm just going to trace out all of the lines. And I'm, I'm not just going to trace out where the lines are, but the thickness of the lines as well. And this can take a few minutes. So while I'm tracing this all out, um, I did want to show y'all some pictures uh, of some baby bunnies that I'm hand raising. Um, I don't know if you are familiar, if you follow my channel, you probably do know that I work at a wildlife rehabilitation center in my area uh, where we taken orphaned or injured animals and rehabilitate them or raise them in the case of um, orphans to be released back into the wild and this season uh, baby season is, always falls in spring and we get inundated with babies 
And right now, I believe at the clinic, we have baby cottontails. We have one baby jackrabbit, um, which we don't get very often. We don't have a whole lot of them in our area. So that's always exciting when we get those in the clinic. Um, we have baby skunks, baby possums. We have a ton of baby possums, a ton of uh, cottontails, rabbits, squirrels. Um, we do have some baby foxes. I think we have eight of those. And we have one um, baby, a baby coyote. Uh, we have some baby fawn. White, we have white-tailed deer in our area, so we get those in. Um, I think we have three of those at the clinic. And baby raccoons. Um, we have some turtles. And then um, a bunch of songbirds, a, a bunch of different birds, doves, songbirds. Um, we have a crow, and we get hawks and owls in periodically as well. So we stay very busy at the clinic, and this time of year we're extremely busy. So uh, cottontail bunnies can be difficult to feed when they're little um, and take a long time. So I volunteered to take 18 of them home with me. Um, so here in a second, I'm going to pop up a picture of, of them when I brought them home and what they look like right now. They're still not ready to be released, but I want to catch you up on what I'm doing on the video. And now, now that I have copied the image kind of exactly, uh, I am using the Sorel transfer paper and a nail dotting tool. Uh, I like the nail dotting tool. Uh, that It keeps my copied image clean so that I'm, if I ever want to do this again on another rock, um, the image stays clean as opposed to if you traced over it again with pencil. It, it kind of widens out your lines sometimes. So I prefer the nail dotting tool. Now I am, this rock is resined and the Sorel transfer paper does transfer to the, to the resin, uh, but not, it, not as well as it would if the, if, if this rock wasn't resined, but it does work. I think in the future, what I would do is actually sand the resin down. And then paint the image, transfer the image, then paint it, then re-resin the rock. Uh, even though the rock would be sanded, everything would stick to the, to the resin better if it was sanded. And then when you go and re-sand it, it erases all of the sanding marks. So that's probably what I would do in the future. So now I'm just going in... <clears throat> And just transferring the image and here I will pop up what my little bunnies look like when I brought them home I brought home 18 and they all fit in a it's like a sterilite uh, storage box that's the size of a shoe box to kind of give you uh, an idea of how small they were when I brought them home and like I said there's 18 of them in this little box so here are 18 little baby rabbits. Some are on top of each other. That's why you probably can't count 18 if you look at the image. And I have since lost five. They're very difficult to hand raise. Um, but I do have 13 left. And this is what they look like now. So there's not as, there's all 13 are not in this picture. Some are on the other side of the hutch. They've all been moved outside into a rabbit hutch and they're growing and they're all looking really, really healthy and will probably in the next couple of weeks to month, they'll be able to be released. And I'm getting to release them here at my home because I live on 40 acres out in the country and I'll be able to watch them grow if they stay around. Um, so we'll just have to see what happens. So now I am ready to start painting in my image. And again, there's no uh, blending or shading or anything 
I'm just, it's pretty much just black paint and just trace the, or copying in my the design. So this is fairly easy because we're just going to just copy it onto the rock. So while I get this painted in, um, I guess I will give you an update on my channel. I do have a couple of more rock painting tutorials um, over the next couple of weeks. And, but I'm starting some actual paintings on a canvas that I am doing for the clinic. And I will probably go ahead and record those and load those onto this channel as well. Normally I do the rock paintings. If you go back to some of my older stuff, I used to do uh, acrylic and oil, well, and a bunch of other different stuff, tutorials that were done on canvas. But I'm kind of itching to get back to doing something that's big scale. So um, I'm going to do those and probably load those onto this channel as well. Um, which I encourage you, if you do want to learn how to paint um, and get into doing bigger things other than rocks. The rocks are a lot of fun because you can kind of turn them out pretty quickly, you know, within a couple of hours. Whereas a large painting can take several weeks uh, if you can't work on it all the time. You know, like I have a job, so I can't um, dedicate my whole day to painting. Um, but you'll, I feel like you'll learn a lot more when you do these large projects uh, as opposed to just doing these smaller projects. You can learn a whole lot and improve just in one painting. So I get, and I get really bored. I that's why here lately I've been experimenting with um, different media and um, kind of switching it up. Uh, one of the tutorials coming up is going to have where you don't even paint on the rock at all. Uh, it's pretty much done with printed vinyl, which is really easy. You just have to buy the printed vinyl, print the picture on it, stick it to the rock. Um, but I have that tutorial coming up. So I'm just kind of switching it around because I just, I get kind of bored just painting the same thing. Plus as a creator, uh, it can be difficult to come up with original ideas. Um, I've had in the past, I did a, uh, what was it? It was a dragonfly that I did. And somebody had mentioned that I should credit uh, Rachel's Rocks for the idea. And then I also painted a fish, and someone told me that I should credit uh, La Cree Fine Arts for the fish idea. But the fish was a direct pull from Pixabay, so that wasn't an original idea. The dragonfly, everybody paints dragonflies, and there's only so many ways you can paint them. I have to go back and research. When somebody does that, says that to me, I have to go back and look and see why they're saying that. Now, I do follow the, both of those creators. I love both of them. I think they're fantastic. Um, but I don't steal anybody's ideas. It just so happens that if somebody paints something and then I paint it, it you're not stealing the idea. It's just hard to come up with original ideas. Now, uh, La Cree Fine Arts, she does surrealism. That is definitely, if I were to go and do a surrealism like her, that would be stealing that idea. Um, but you can take inspiration from it. <clears throat> so uh, I, I have to do a lot of research before I actually, I'll do, I'll paint rocks and stuff. And then I have to go and make sure that one of the other creators hasn't done the same thing. Um, there's several times where I have painted rocks and then not posted the videos because Rachel has painted something uh, the same subject matter, they didn't look anything alike, but they were the same subject matter. But to try not to step on anybody's toes or get accused of anything, I just don't even post the video. So that can be kind of frustrating, um, especially when I'm dedicated to trying to release a video every week. And then I have to pull that video and not release it. Um, just because I think sometimes people don't, don't understand that um, these aren't original ideas then <laughs> so but so just to not try to avoid any kind of 
conflict or confusion, um, I'm, I, I try not to do that. So I try to come up with completely original ideas. And like I said, the only way to have it completely original is to do something like this, where I'm taking my background and adding an image to it, um, doing some of the print vinyl stuff, doing some of the resin tricks, uh, stuff that I've been doing with glitter and resin. Um, so it's, but that takes a lot more time, a lot more research, a lot more supplies. Um, it gets expensive for me because I have to have all of that stuff all at one time. Um, <clears throat> but that's kind of why I'm venturing out a little bit from just painting images on rocks. So I hope you understand and I hope you enjoy the videos. Uh, and, you know, we'll kind of go along with me on the journey and maybe venture out outside your comfort zone and try some of these other other medias and kind of mix media things. Um, but I try to keep them as much as I can based on painting. Painting's my number one passion, but like I said, and I do a lot of different things. I do tumblers, and I do wreaths, and I do, uh, have done stuff with, uh, chipboard and, and, like, paper photo albums and books and stuff like that. So, uh, when I can incorporate other, uh, other projects, like I'll make a tumbler and then I'll figure out how I can do that same design onto a rock. That's kind of what, where a lot of my latest inspiration has been coming from, has been coming from tumblers. Um, I'll do that. So, but again, just trying to come up with original ideas because they, it can be difficult. So hopefully you'll stay on the journey with me. Hopefully you'll subscribe to my channel. Um, and keep following me. And when I do kind of deviate from the rocks, uh, you won't get discouraged. I'll always come back to them. Uh, but I do have a couple of big uh, canvas projects. And I paint these uh, when I do animals, which both of the projects I have coming up are going to be based on animals. Um, I donate those to the clinic. And then the clinic that I work for, they can sell that and then... Uh, make money off of those paintings. So that's, that's another reason uh, to kind of venture out uh, and do some of these other, these other larger projects. So, so I'm still just painting in the zebra, just trying to make sure my stripes, sometimes the, uh, the paint sticks to the resin, but, uh, you can also, it'll also pull the paint off. So you, I do fight with that just a little bit. You always want to, you know, kind of pick up your rock and look at it from different angles, uh, and make sure that everything looks good. All your lines are tight and I don't have any gaps with the glare off of the resin and all of my lights and stuff. Sometimes it can be hard to see the image. Because I paint with the image flat on the table instead of kind of lifted up like an artist would. So sometimes I can't see exactly what I'm doing. Now here I'm taking my dotting tool and I'm scraping the paint off of the rock because it, it doesn't stick to the resin real tight you can go in and scrape it off and then fix up any lines that you have. I'm also, I also have to go in and clean up the uh, Sorel transfer, the white from the Sorel transfer paper where I have any of those, uh, that white showing, I have to clean that off and I, you can use a Q-tip um, I'm going to, water will take it off, but uh, you'll definitely want to get that white off using water. I started out with a Q-tip and then I went to using my paintbrush to get that off. And then for my signature, I've mentioned this before and other rocks, I use, I, I drew out my, my uh, signature. Ugh, my wide words are hard sometimes. I drew out my signature 
And then I copied that onto, it's called water slide paper. And I printed a bunch of them out onto one sheet of water slide paper. And then I just cut out the little, my little signature. And then you just soak it in water for a few seconds and it'll slide right off of its backing, paper backing onto the rock and sit there. And it works really good. So if you're interested in any of my rocks, they are located over on my Etsy shop. I want to thank you so much for watching the video, subscribing, liking, sharing, all of that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video.